Hi friends, my name is Angela and welcome to my YouTube channel. It is that time of year when YouTube is saturated with all sorts of Halloween recommendations, whether you want some recommendations on what to watch, what to read, what to listen to, what to do. It is, it is, it is out there. And I don't know about you, but I don't need another recommendation on watching Practical Magic or Vampire Diaries or read another fantasy, fanta, fanta, fanta romancy, romanticy novel. I wanted some mature recommendations and booktube in particular is very saturated with a younger crowd and I think that's fantastic. I love that there are all these different types of people out there reading but I'm a more mature reader. I'm in my 40s and I wanted a bit of a seasonal kind of pack of things that maybe I could recommend to you to read or watch or listen to that might also fit with your vibe. Something that is a little bit more mature, a little bit more selective, I guess. No jump scares whatsoever. This could totally be cosy. It could be nostalgic. So I thought I'd give you this little bit of a pack. Halloween for me is not a huge event on the calendar. In Australia, I don't think it is that big either. We do have a number of like kids that will do some trick or treating in the neighborhood, but it is very, very mild. They, we, in my particular neighborhood, people know that if your house is not decorated, that they don't come and knock on the door, which is great. So you can opt out or you can opt in. And we really never got into it. I'm, I'm not into Halloween itself, but I do like the cozy, atmospheric nature of the spooky season. And even though we're in spring, we do get a little bit of, we're still quite cool. Um, we're still getting quite a bit of wet weather. It's been like really, really cold in this last week. So it can be a little atmospheric in that sense. So I do like the idea of curling up with a cozy, maybe something a little bit more tense book or watching a murder mystery or that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what I am into for Halloween, maybe putting on some smooth jazz, pouring a cocktail. That's my idea of a good Halloween. I want something that's just going to make my heart race a little bit, little bit, but not enough to give me a big jump scare and maybe, maybe something to make me laugh. So my first recommendation is some music. I am loving jazz at the moment. I just this, I don't know what it is, but anyway, I've pulled together this a jazzy Halloween playlist and there is Moonlight, Midnight, Being Bewitched and a little bit of that old black magic. It is a beautiful little playlist. Jump onto it. I'll put a link in the description. If you're on my sub stack, this will be coming into your inbox anyway, so don't worry about that. But you can, you can grab the link below. It's on Spotify. And it's just a beautiful little collection of all sorts of different jazzy standards. I, I really do love listening to that. And my husband and I typically will, um, on a Friday night, we'll make a cocktail. I'll normally make an old fashioned is his favorite, sometimes a martini, uh, but we are split because I do like a gin martini and he does like a vodka martini. And if you're having a cocktail, you don't want to make more work for yourself. So I don't want to be making a gin martini and a vodka martini. So you want to make a, a cocktail. So Usually then we'll just split the difference and go for an old fashioned. But I do love just making a nice cocktail, putting out a few, you know, crackers and the cheese and something like that, putting on a bit of jazz. And at the moment now the sun's setting a lot later. We're just basking in the afternoon sun. It's just so beautiful. So I hope you enjoy this playlist. I really do hope you enjoy it. But let's get into some book recommendations for a mature Halloween. Some of these are cozy, some are fiction, some are short stories, some you can read in one setting, some you might want to set aside a couple of nights to curl up under a blanket and then maybe if you're like me, I still every now and then if I read something that's just a bit too scary, I still put on like a Disney movie for about half an hour just to calm the waters afterwards. But anyway, I've got a few books here that I think are really great fits. They are not all like your typical Halloween books. These are books that might have a bit of a tense thread through them, maybe a mystery. I think a mystery really does suit the Halloween period. Uh, so the first one I wanted to recommend is A Date with Death from Julia Chapman. This is, I'm going to go from cozy through to not so cozy. 
And this, I just finished a few months ago and I really did enjoy it. It's a great little, it's the first book in a series called The Dales Detective Series. And it follows um, a woman in uh, this little Yorkshire town who has a dating agency and there's a, a man who comes back into the town. He is like this bad penny that has turned back up in the town and no one wants him there. And he opens a detective agency and they work together to solve these murders. And it's really very, very cosy. It is uh, a lot of fun. There's a lot of humour. Uh, you can see it unfolding like some sort of TV show, like a imagine like an all creatures great and small, but with an element of mystery in it. I do enjoy it. It's really, really good. And I do have the second book on my bookshelf ready to go. There's a, I think there might be six or seven books already in this series. That one is a definite cosy mystery that I would recommend. This is one that I bought for myself to read this month, which is A Very Woodsy Murder by Ellen Byron. I haven't read this yet, but I've heard some good things about it. Down on her luck, sitcom writer Dee Stern is flipping the script. Twice divorced and wasting her talents on an obnoxious kids show, the lifelong Angelino embraces the urge to jump in her car and keep driving. It's a road trip with no destination until she pulls into a mid-century motel filled with cobwebs and retro charm. Nestled in the shadow of a national park, it's a time capsule of a place that, like her, could use some work. So in the most impulsive move of her life, Dee teams up with her best friend, Jeff, who happens to be her first ex-husband, to transform the ageing ranch into a golden motel of the mountains, a hiker's oasis on the edge of the wilderness. But Dee and Jeff soon realise there couldn't be two people more unprepared for the hospitality business. There's also the panic-inducing reality of prowling bears, a general store is the only shopping spot for miles. Living and working in the middle of nowhere takes some getting used to, especially when a disrespectful guest ends up getting murdered. Now with the motel duo topping the suspect list, Dee must steer clear of a meddling park ranger, face her past in showbiz and determine if a killer is a local or a tourist because as she quickly finds out, there are many things worse than a one-star review. It sounds like a bit of fun. I think I think it would be a fun read. So this is something that's on my uh, October reading list for sure. But that would be, I think that would be a great fit for any of you in America coming into the uh, autumn season, the fall season. Um, so definitely check that out now. I think when it comes to Halloween, you can't go past a couple of really classic stories. And one of them would be The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, from Washington Irving and this one has a couple of other short stories in there too I think there's four or three all up for Rip Van Winkle, The Spectre Bridegroom and The Devil and Tom Walker and you can't go past it it is a short stories I think this would be great I mean if you had some older kids you could read that to them but I think there's there's a reason these are classics right and I, I love these ones and this one was a really beautiful little edition that has uh, some there's some beautiful little artwork in here. So I think that's a great one for the, um, for the Halloween season. And this one may be a little bit out there, but bear with me. I think that Antarctica is a really great uh, October read for the reason that this has quite a few stories in here that are tense. There's a couple of stories in here that I would definitely, I would see fleshed out as full novels or movies of a murder mystery or a psychological thriller. In particular, the first story out of this book is, it, it comes out with a bang. And that particular story is a woman who is married, she's got children, and she decides that she is going to um, have an encounter, a sexual encounter with a stranger. And the ending of that story is quite harrowing, her experience. And but I, I, I would highly recommend this one. It's, a, it's not strictly Halloween. It's not strictly autumn. It's not any of those things. But I think it gives the vibe. I think it really does. So it's, it's a bit out there. It's not something I think anyone else would recommend. But there are a few stories in here like that as well. There's another one about uh, two sisters. I think yeah, it's called Sisters. And I, and I think that one also is a little bit creepy. Um, but yes, yeah, so there's definitely a few stories in here that would be good little halloween -y reads. I can't go past recommending Daphne du Maurier's The Birds and Other Stories. If you haven't yet picked this one up, I'd recommend it. Um, the Birds itself, if you even just picked it up to read The Birds alone, that 
is a great one to read in Halloween. The other one I would recommend if you could only read one would probably be The Apple Tree. I think The Apple Tree or possibly even The Little Photographer. Those were really, really great ones. Um, it's again similar to Antarctica where they're, they're kind of, their stories about people and human nature and the rawness of it and what we do to other people. And I think they've, they've got a similar thread like that. Um, Daphne du Maurier's is a little bit more, not rambunctious, not rambunctious isn't the word, but it's just got a little bit more, you know, whereas um, Claire Keegan allows you to read through the lines and figure out for yourself what happened. Another one I'd recommend is The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle. This was my first Sherlock Holmes book that I read. It is a very slight read. It's very, very small. I really enjoyed it. It's a little bit supernatural. Watson kind of goes to, to work while Sherlock Holmes is not as present as I imagined he was going to be, but I really enjoyed this one. It's very atmospheric. If you are in a place that is cold and foggy and you have a fireplace, this is a really, really good one to get into. Something I am in the final throes of finishing is Frankenstein from Mary, Mary Shelley. I am like Oh, I'm like right at the very, very end. I'm savoring every moment of it. And this is my first read of it and I am enjoying it. It's really interesting because the way that it is told is they are telling a story while you're reading a story, you know, like so you're meeting Frankenstein who is telling his story. So it's I was getting a little bit weary of that particular method uh, for a while, but it keeps it keeps you going. It really does does keep you going. So if you haven't read Frankenstein, I would re I would highly recommend it because it is nothing like any of the cliches that you have seen in pop culture or seen in movies. There is none of this, you know, it's alive kind of stuff coming out of it. it Frankenstein, the maker of the creature, is not what you would see, what you have seen in the movies. And so I, I'm looking forward to, to the ending and seeing how Mary Shelley ties up the ending. And I do like this edition, actually. This is the 18, 1831 edition. I decided to go with this one because I figured, so there is an 1818 text and an 1831 uh, text, which is a revised edition. And I kind of thought, well, if Mary Shelley revised it, there was a reason for it. So I went with that one. I think I'm going to enjoy looking into it a little bit more because there's quite a bit of text and information about Mary Shelley herself, about creating the book, writing the book for the first time. Uh, at the very back of it, there's even a timeline about the revisions that she wrote and her husband wrote with her. I would, if you haven't read it yet, this is a good time to do it. And this was a great one. This one is from Alma Classics. Alma Classics. And my last book recommendation is a non-fiction book, and that is A Very British Murder from Lucy Worsley. This one... I, I'm again. I'm in the I'm in the middle of it, and it is a very fast-paced read. I'm really whizzing through it. It's a lot of fun. It's taking the idea of how the British have taken murder and turned it from turned it into a form of entertainment, and it's not just the British anymore, right? It's it's the world, and it's quite fascinating. How I was reading recently about. Madame Two Swords and about how there was uh, one of the most famous, one of the most popular exhibitions was, uh, I can't remember what it was called now, like the Murderer's Row or something, and it was like all the, the famous murderers. And I remember seeing that. I remember being in England and going to Madame Two Swords and seeing the, you know, like it was like the Charles Dickens era looking uh, places and these murderers, and I remember seeing it, and it really brought back a lot of memories. People in the Victorian age weren't exposed to life and death as much as they were in the Georgian age. In the Georgian age, you experienced life and death. It was right in front of you. People died in front of you. When people died, you had, you know, everyone came through and they said their goodbyes. You saw people born. People were born at home. In the Victorian age, things changed a little bit and then that's when things flipped a bit more. So you weren't exposed to it as much and that's when things seemed to change where the, the media, people were reenacting murders or Madame Dussauds came out and all these different things. It's really very interesting how the public 
wanted these things. And so I'm, I'm in, I, I am really enjoying this deep dive into the phenomenon of true crime and how people enjoy it as a pastime. There's this little passage at the very beginning from George, George Orwell. It is a Sunday afternoon, preferably, be, preferably before the war. You put your feet up on the sofa, settle your spectacles on your nose and open the news of the world. A cup of mahogany brown tea has just put you in the right mood. The sofa cushions are soft, the fire is well alight, the air is warm and stagnant. In these blissful circumstances, what is it you want to read about? Naturally, about a murder. It is puzzling, it is fascinating. This is a great read if you're into yeah, non-fiction. If you want a non-fiction read that is not, it's not gory, it's very good. Lucy Worsley is a great writer. So that is my last book recommendation. I lie, I had another book recommendation, but it's not physically here. Uh, it was one I read earlier this year. If you want to read an actual, like, a witchy kind of book, it was The Last Witch of Scotland. It was a very good book, and I liked it because it had a mix of fact and fiction. It's actually inspired by the true story of the last woman who was tried and executed for the crime of witchcraft in Scotland in 1772. I personally feel this book is a bit more young adult, rather than straight historical fiction, but I really did enjoy it. And I don't read a lot of young adult, but this book was great. I can really see this being turned into a movie. It was really, really engaging. And it follows the story of a young girl named Aaliyah and her and her mother are through circumstances that her father dies in a fire and Aaliyah has a deformity. And at that time in history, if you were slightly different to anybody, you were considered to be you know, practicing the dark arts. And her mother was a healer. She would help women with childbirth and that wasn't helpful either. So it these things um, just kind of made them a bit of an outcast. But anyway, uh, Philip, Philip Paris was the author. He took this little piece of information of this last woman who was executed for um, witchcraft, which was Aaliyah's mother, Janet, and he gave them this backstory. It was really quite fascinating and the characters were lovable. The minute you, there were some really lovable characters and there were some really horrible characters too. So I, I recommend that one as well if you want something with a little bit of a witchy vibe. Okay, some movie recommendations. I, I don't think, if there is anything I like more than books, it's movies. I am a bit of a movie buff. So I, when it comes to scary movies, I cut my teeth on things like Tales of the Crypt, you know, that kind of stuff in terms of scary stuff scream you know I'm a child of like I grew up in the 80s and 90s but I'm not a horror I don't like horror and those super scary movies so these movies are more psychological thriller there's a few black comedies there's no jump scares there's no nothing here is going to like give you the heart attack that's going to end it all and in my opinion when it comes to Halloween that you it really is hard to go past a film noir or classic these very intelligent uh, you know witty films that make you think to read between the lines I think those are really really important so first let's start with a couple of comedies because I think they're a great way to go into Halloween in my opinion. And they're probably going to be quite nostalgic for you. Maybe you haven't watched any of these for a while. The first one I'd recommend is Death Becomes Her, which is one of my favourite movies of all time. To be honest, any movie from the 80s or 90s with Meryl Streep or Goldie Hawn is up there. But this one is just so good. The black comedy of it, it's got enough death in there, a bit, bit of, little bit of gore, a little bit of blood. If you haven't watched it for a while, do go check it out. I, it was It's a lot of fun. Another movie which is from the Southern Hemisphere is What We Do in the Shadows. And this is a great black comedy, which is uh, from a Kiwi group of people who you probably all know by now. At the time it was released, the team behind Flight of the Concords was still quite only known in Australia and New Zealand. And What We Do in the Shadows is a real black comedy, tongue-in-cheek look at these vampires in New Zealand who are rooming with humans and they're just going about their day and they're doing their things and it's very funny, very funny. So if you haven't if you haven't caught that before, do so. I highly recommend the movie over the TV show because the movie has the original cast. 
And another nostalgic one would be The Goonies. I love watching The Goonies and I think it's a really good one for this time of year. The location of that really misty seaside location is quite evocative and it's a lot of fun and, you know, treasure hunting. I, I really do think it's a great one for kids. I, I can't wait to show it to my grandkids one day. I don't know when I'll be able to. I keep thinking about what age were, the, were my kids when I showed them these movies. And I think they were a lot younger than I would show them to my grandkids. Uh, we, you know, things have changed. But I would definitely, yeah, Death Becomes Her and The Goonies, I think, would be really great, you know, nostalgic watches this this Halloween. And then I think you really can't go into Halloween without watching something from Tim Burton whether it is Sweeney Todd or Edward Scissorhands, which could give you some of those Frankenstein vibes. Although there is the debate that Edward Scissorhands is a Christmas movie. Then there is also Dark Shadows, which was, I really did enjoy Dark Shadows. Beetlejuice, of course, which is quite of the moment again. I think any of those movies would be great. And I'll probably end up watching Dark Shadows again because it's got Michelle Pfeiffer and Johnny Depp. And yeah, I think that would be a great one. And of course there has to be a Hitchcock movie in there somewhere. You really could double down and watch The Birds. I have not seen The Birds before, so I will be watching that this Halloween. But if I had to choose another Hitchcock movie, it would probably, for Halloween, it would probably be Dial M for Murder. I think that is a great one. If you, you know, just pour yourself a cocktail, get yourself a little bit of a cheese plate, sit down, dim the lights, turn this on, because it is pretty much, it's all set in one room it's it feels like it plays out like a play it's in one setting and for that reason I think it gives it this a little bit of a claustrophobic kind of feel gives it that coziness and lends itself to that uh, autumnal cozy you know tense feeling um, my, my favorite Hitchcock movie is Rear Window that I, hands down I would recommend that all the time that's one of my favorite movies to watch in summer but uh, those, yeah, you, you can't go wrong with a Hitchcock movie. A more modern movie that I would recommend is The Wonder. This came out a couple of years ago and it has Florence Pugh. It was based on the book The Wonder by Emma Donoghue, who is a wonderful novelist. I really did love her book Room. Uh, I have not read The Wonder, but the movie was very lovely. It, the subject is interesting. But the location is, I think it would go really well with those autumnal, witchy kind of vibes. So, so it's set around a, a young woman who was just served in the war in like the mid-1800s. And she's sent to a small town in Ireland because there are reports of a young girl there who has been fasting for months, that she has not eaten for months. And so she's been commissioned by the church for her and this nun to pretty much just watch her and to report back her, their findings to the church and say, is this happening? Is this a miracle? Is it a miracle that she does not have to eat? Is she being sustained by something more supernatural? And so that's what this nurse does and that's the role that Florence Pugh is playing. And it is very tense and very tight and very um, very quiet and it's a really beautifully shot movie uh, set in Ireland, which is some beautiful landscapes. And as the movie unfolds, you know, we, we start to see some secrets unfolding from this family and also from the nurse herself. Uh, so I, I would really recommend that at this particular time of year. I think it would be really, really great. And that was only just in the last couple of years that that movie came out. Another one on my list this year is to watch the original My Cousin Rachel movie. I read the book this year. I watched the new adaptation this year. I want to watch the original, which has uh, Richard Burton in it as well. So I really do want to watch that one. And I believe that that is uh, both the newer version and the older version are on Disney Plus in Australia, at least. They are both there. So I want to watch that one. It's in black and white. I think it's going to be, yeah, that one's going to be very tense. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the havoc that Richard Burton brings as Philip. I think it's going to be crazy. So that's one that I really want to watch. And I would, I would recommend if you have not seen My Cousin Rachel that you would watch one or the other of those as well. And another great one is Crooked House, I think is a great movie to watch. Crooked House is an Agatha Christie adaptation and it is very much in a bit of a knives out kind of feeling in the sense that you've got all these people in one house. 
any of those country houses or uh, those movies where you've got a number of people in a hotel or a country house or a location where they're kind of stuck in the same spot together, I think are really great. They, they, you get a lot of reactions from people that you may not have if they were in their own living spaces in their own homes. And Crooked House, uh, there is a murder that's taken place and we have this man who's come through to try and help solve it. And this is actually one of Agatha Christie's books and quite famously she chose a murderer who a lot of people feel it was an unfair outcome. So I'll just leave it at that. But, yeah, definitely Crooked House. And those are my recommendations. So I hope you will take some of them. I hope... You know, they're not all Halloween-y, spooky, ghosty kind of things, but hopefully there are some tense, interesting, little bit of murder, little bit of supernatural stuff. You know, hopefully there's something in there that might float your boat this Halloween. There's so many other things out there that we can read to to really enjoy this season. Uh, so I would love to hear below um, if any of these things have jumped out at you that you might be looking to watch or read. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.